Africa has a lot of historic cities spread out on the continent, and there is no doubt that the Malian city of Timbuktu has its place among the top 10. For obvious reasons, it has survived three major empires and was a seat of learning in West Africa for a very long time. Some credit its success to its fairly fortunate location being on the southern edge of the Sahara Desert, yet about 8 miles north of the Niger River. This gave it an opportunity to become a trading post and a convenient route for the Trans-Saharan Caravan. Salt, gold and ivory, among other commodities, was traded on a daily basis in this city. So it's obvious to point out that this city has had some amazing history that needs to be explored. And that is what we are going to talk about in this video. Let's go to the very beginning and by that, let's start with how the city got its name. There's a lot of speculations about how Timbuktu got its name. But one origin story that stands out starts with an old woman called Baktu. The story goes like this. Somewhere in the 1100s, what is now Timbuktu was a seasonal nomadic camp set up by the Tuareg while they roamed the Sahara Desert. They left Baktu to oversee the camp while they were away, so as you might have guessed it, they named it after the old woman. Timbuktu translates as the place of Baktu. With the original foundation already established, Timbuktu soon became one of the ideal trading locations in the region. So for the next two centuries, it enjoyed its success until 1324. Mansa Musa I peacefully annexed the city into the Mali Empire when he was returning from Mecca. It was within this period that the city saw significant growth. Most of the notable structures we see today was built during this period. Structures like the Royal Palace, which is now lost to time, and the Denjeba and Sanko Mosque, later turned into universities, are a testament to the empire's power. This enabled the people living in the city to immerse themselves in scholarship, art, and most importantly, the Islamic religion. Timbuktu became one of the famous learning centers in West Africa, which accepted learners from all around the world. So from 1325 to 1433, the city had an increasing prosperity and political stability. But with the collapse of the Mali Empire in the 1400s, the city came under the control of the Bourbons from 1433 to 1468. This sent the city into a decline, but things got worse when the city was captured by Sony Ali from the Songhai Empire. According to historical records, the capture of the city was full of bloodshed, yet Sony's reign was short and even his son couldn't keep the kingdom together. It fell on the shoulders of Askia the Great, the founder of the Askia dynasty, to bring the city back to its former glory. Askia the Great grew the mosque and university to 180 facilities with over 200,000 students. A remarkable feat considering that the population of Timbuktu at that time was only over 100,000. Timbuktu entered the Golden Age during the time of the Askias. The tales of the wealth of the city and West Africa in general traveled north until it reached the Moroccans. So in 1591, the Moroccans defeated the Songhai Empire in the Battle of Tondibi, bringing an end to the Songhai Empire. And if you love the video so far, kindly leave a like and subscribe to this channel for more amazing content. Thank you. So as with all golden ages, it has to come to an end. Timbuktu entered a declining phase for yet a second time. The Moroccans exiled many scholars from the city, but within time, they realized that maintaining the city was very expensive, so they left in 1618. After this period, Timbuktu didn't play any significant role in history, but that didn't stop Timbuktu's success story from reaching Europe. For over two centuries, the stories of Leo Africanus, a Spanish Moor of a gold-plated city in West Africa, has fascinated the minds of European adventurers, and they were eager to find this city. Several missions were dispatched, and for the most part of two centuries, European explorers were able to locate it and trade with the locals, until the 19th century the period European countries were grabbing territories in Africa, so it was only a matter of time before the city was conquered. And it came in 1894. A small group of French soldiers took over the city, which led it to enter a 60-year phase of French colonial rule. 
Timbuktu finally gained independence in 1960 and it became part of the country of Mali. It now served as an administrative center while still serving as a trading post for nomads and locals, just as the original founders intended. It's also one of the best tourist locations on the continent of Africa. Rightly so, this city is rich with history, starting as a camp in the desert, a major trading post and a center of learning in West Africa, spreading its fame and knowledge all across the world. So this is the complete history of Timbuktu. Thank you for watching this video to the end, like, subscribe and see you in the next video.